Hi, Steve fans, and welcome back. No one will have missed the tragic case of the four divers who went adrift in Malaysia recently, and a teenager who sadly didn't make it. Now, I'm not going to comment on that particular incident, but it seemed timely to focus on what we as divers can do to make ourselves easier to locate if we do find ourselves floating on the surface with no surface support in sight. This month's videos are all sponsored by Seiko, who have been producing quality dive watches since 1965, and many of their innovations are still seen today. No diver wants to find themselves alone, or even with their buddy or a group of divers, drifting out on the ocean with no dive boat in sight. Thankfully, it is an occurrence which doesn't happen too often. But as the Malaysia incident illustrated, it is something which can occur and have tragic consequences. Now, we as divers can do our bit to try and ensure this doesn't happen to us. First and foremost, we need to do all we can to not lose contact with our dive boat and its crew so that we don't end up adrift in the first place. Obviously, we are underwater and they're up on the surface. But if we find ourselves away from where the dive plan said we should be, there are ways to alert your dive boat crew to your predicament. That is where a DSMB comes in handy. I've talked about DSMB several times in the past, and I always have one with me whenever I go diving in the sea. The only time I don't dive with one is if I'm going into a local quarry. DSMBs, or delayed surface marker buoys to give them their full name, are basically a tube of varying length that can be inflated at depth from your octopus or by blowing into it. And that's either manually or using an attached compressed air cylinder. And then sent to the surface to mark your position for your watching boat crew. Now, often you fire them up from your safety stop, and many people only have six meters or so line on their spool, or even just a six meter length of webbing for this very purpose. However, if the proverbial hits the fan when you are at depth, say that you're on a wall at 40 meters, go off into the blue to get that epic shark shot and then lose sight of the wall, or you're going along the wall and you get caught in the current and it sweeps you away into the blue. Well, by the time that you can get yourself up to safety stop depth and launch your DSMB, you could be literally hundreds of meters away from your boat. I have a compact spool that has 45 meters of line on it. This means I can fire up my DSMB from my max dive depth if necessary. And then at least I'm giving my boat crew a fighting chance of seeing it as I'm heading off over the horizon. I know countless times when a diver's DSMB was the difference between them being found and not being located. So always take a DSMB and spool with you on a sea dive. One thing, make sure you know how to launch one. There is no point having a DSMB if you cannot safely and efficiently launch it to the surface. This is something that can be practiced in your local inland site or in the shallows in the sea, and it is not a difficult skill to master, but it is better to have nailed the technique before you have to fire one up in anger. I remember being on a liverboard where they asked everybody to send up a DSMB at the end of the check dive, and when they asked before the dive if everyone knew how to do it, everybody nodded their heads. However, it became blatantly obvious at the end of the dive that many had never even handled a DSMB before, and there were plenty of rapid ascents as they completely messed up the deployment. So, don't be like them. Practice, practice, practice. So, a DSMB can highlight where you are while you are still underwater by putting a visual reference on the surface. But what about if the boat crew don't spot the DSMB and you find yourself on the surface with no dive boat in sight. Now you need to make yourself as visible as possible for your searching dive boat or any other vessel, aircraft, etc. that is looking for you. Keep your DSMB inflated and aloft, as even a relatively small one of four or five or even six feet long is still far more visible from a distance than your bobbing head. This is where a sealed DSMB rather than a basic open tube variant is far superior as it will retain its shape for far longer. 
Along with the SMB and spool, another essential that I always carry with me is a small torch. If it's getting towards dusk, you can use the torch to mark your position. If your DSMB has an opening at a bottom, you can even insert your torch and light up the entire tube. You can also get emergency strobes that emit a very, very bright flashing light. These can be attached to the top of your DSMB as well, and that makes them even more visible. Other handy devices to carry with you are a signaling mirror, or as these can be a bit fragile, many people, including myself, now opt for an old CD or DVD. The shiny underside of these is perfect for catching the light and flashing your position towards any searching vessel or aircraft. Obviously, you need sunshine for this to work, but it takes nothing to pop a disc into your pocket, and it may just be what you need. Many BCDs come with a whistle attached, but if not, then it's worth adding one to your arsenal. They're only small, but if you get the right type, they can be extremely loud. Far louder and easier to hear over a greater distance than your voice. If you want to go one step further, you can get a noise-making device that sits between the power inflator and the low pressure hose. These can make an incredibly loud noise that will travel a vast distance. You can also invest in waterproof flares, which can either emit clouds of dense smoke to mark your position during the day, or bright red or white handheld flames, or at night. Flares are banned by many airlines, so these aren't an option for travelling divers. But if you're diving in your own country, yeah, they are an option. Remember that a group of people are easier to spot than individuals. So if you do find yourself adrift in a group, don't assume that you will all float along together. It is all too easy to become separated. So use a line from your spool to fasten everyone together. You can also get emergency bracelets made from braided paracord, which when opened up, give you some 25 feet or more of cord that you can use to keep your group together. Now, all of the above options are relatively inexpensive and could either result in you not being lost from your dive boat crew in the first place or located soon after. But if you really want to play safe, then break out your wallet and invest in an EPUB or Emergency Position Indication Radio Beacon. EPUBs, when activated, transmit a distress signal that ships and planes in the vicinity can pick up, and they can guide search crews to within a few metres of your location. Now, I'm not suggesting that you necessarily take all of the above on every single ocean dive you do, but I'd recommend that you have a DSMB and a spool, a small torch, and a whistle as the absolute bare minimum. I always say it's better to have emergency locating equipment with you and not need it than be in a dicey situation and wish that you had that gear with you. It is always better to err on the side of caution. And as we sadly know from recent events, it can literally mean the difference between life and death. What are your go-to safety essentials? What do you take on every ocean dive? Leave your comments below, and if you have a query, fire away. If we can't answer it, someone in our growing community might be able to help you out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button to our YouTube channel, ring that notification bell so that you always know when we put up a new video, and don't forget that you can grab a free digital magazine subscription in the description below. As always, stay safe, and if you're going diving, enjoy.